Review this lecture after reading Chapter 10, Ideology, in Understanding Movies. Use the film grammar sheet in the module on D2L to aid in the note-taking process. Film and media are vehicles of communication. Film and media contain ideological content. Film and media have a powerful influence on our understanding of the world. Let's clarify what we mean when we say ideology. Ideology, beliefs, values, ideas that shape the way we think, act, and understand the world. Virtually everything is ideological. Our attitudes about sex, work, power sharing, authority, family, and religion, all of these interactions involve ideological assumptions within culture. The following contextual quotes address how film functions as a vehicle to represent and communicate ideology. Since ancient times, critics have discussed art as having a double function, to teach and to provide pleasure. That comes from our textbook author. And entertainment always functions as a part of culture, as a part of an array of cultures, subcultures, and countercultures. All films have ideological content in varying degrees. Because films are made within cultures, characters reflect or challenge cultural norms. It's impossible for a film to lack ideological content. Films are coded with ideological messages. Three degrees of ideological explicitness. Neutral. No overt ideological statements. Emphasis on entertainment. Implicit. Inferred statement of values. Most fiction films fit here. Explicit. Aims to persuade the audience of a particular ideology. Examples. Patriotic films, documentaries, and propaganda. Neutral ideological explicitness. No overt ideological statements. Emphasis on entertainment. We'll use Disney films here as an example. On the surface, these films are considered harmless entertainment and made for children. Here we have a picture of Aladdin, Jasmine, Cinderella, and Ariel. Just spend some time looking at these images. Leading Disney characters tend to have unrealistic standards of beauty. A satirical look at ideological messages in Disney movies from The Little Mermaid. It's okay to abandon your family, drastically change your body, and give up your strongest talent in order to get your man. Once she sees your pretty face, only a witch's spell could draw his eyes away from you. Snow White. At first it may seem terrible being so beautiful that other women get jealous enough to try and kill you. But don't worry, once your beauty protects a man, he'll save you. Sleeping Beauty. Pretty girls don't even need to be alive to get some hot, princely action. Aladdin. As a woman, your political worth is reduced to your marriageability. Beauty and the Beast. Appearances don't matter. What counts is in your heart, unless you're a girl. And Cinderella. If you're beautiful enough, you may be able to stay, escape your terrible living conditions by getting a wealthy man to fall for you. An equal opportunity offender. What Disney princes teach men about attracting women? Be rich, charming, famous, and good looking. Be rich, charming, famous, and good looking. Be charming and good looking and appear to be rich and famous. Be rich, charming, famous, and good looking. Be rich, charming, famous, and good looking. Be rich and famous with the promise of charm and good looks to come. Implicit ideological explicitness. Inferred statement of values. Most fiction films fit here. An example of an inferred statement of values is the traditional definition of a family. Man plus woman plus children equals family. 
Pretty Woman is an example of a film with implicit ideological explicitness. On the surface, it's a Cinderella story and a light-hearted romantic comedy. But if we look for coded messages, we'll find the female lead is a sex worker, the male lead is rich and buys her company, the man saves the woman. Consider what this says about representation of gender, sex, and power. You can watch the trailer for this on the YouTube supplemental playlist. Explicit ideological explicitness aims to persuade the audience of a particular ideology. Examples, patriotic films, social issue documentaries, and propaganda. Films with explicit ideology will clearly define one ideology as being right above all others. Three examples of films with explicit ideology. Triumph of the Will, a work of propaganda, Bowling for Columbine, a social issue documentary, and American Sniper, a patriotic film. Ideology is a language in film. Characters speak through ideological subtext. We root for the hero, good guy, or underdog, and against the bad guy or villain, in large part because of their ideological or moral constructs. What attracts the audience sympathy? Favorable traits include idealism, courage, generosity, loyalty, and kindness. Good looks and sex appeal attract sympathy, as does an underdog or outsider. The audience can have sympathy for the anti-hero and femme fatale, even if they dislike their actions, if they have a few favorable characteristics or are charming and good looking. Villains and antagonists often have negative traits, selfishness, cruelty, cowardice, and dishonesty. In addition to behavior that is unsympathetic, villains and antagonists are often made to look unattractive. Disenfranchisement and Changing Ideologies Analyzing a film as a cultural and historical document allows us to see how representations change over time. Typically, the dominant group gets the most face time while all the others fight over the scraps. Questions to consider about ideology and representation. How does cinema represent ideology? Why are some groups favored over others? And how is this reflected in film roles and genres? The Annenberg School of Communication did a study of the top 500 grossing films between 2007 and 2012, looking at gender roles of speaking characters. Key findings help us determine which groups are favored over others. Gender prevalence. In 2012, out of 4,475 speaking roles, 28.4% were female. Out of 1,228 directors, writers, and producers in the top 100 grossing films, women accounted for 4.1, 12.2, and 20% respectively. Feminist film criticism began in the late 1960s. Feminist film criticism brought attention to the role of women on and off the screen. Feminist film criticism found women had shorter acting careers than men, and women were underrepresented behind the scenes. Laura Mulvey, film scholar, wrote Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema in 1973. She argues that in classical Hollywood cinema, the female form is often the object of desire. 
This theory becomes known as the male gaze. The male gaze theory argues the camera takes the point of view of a man and women are reduced to sexual objects. Examples can be seen in media today, more than 40 years later. Representations of women within the male gaze. Misrepresentation is a documentary that examines the impact of media representations of women. Students are encouraged to watch this informative film. Did you know Alice Guy Blaché was a pioneer of early French cinema and the director of fictional narratives? Her film, The Cabbage Fairy, was made in 1896 and is arguably the first fictional narrative ever made. African American actors had little opportunity to play leading roles in the golden age of Hollywood and beyond. African American actors portrayed characters that were stereotypical and often offensive. Hattie McDaniel won a Best Supporting Actress Academy Award for her role as the maid in Gone with the Wind. The character perpetuated a stereotypical role for black actresses as servants and domestics. Louis Armstrong, singer, musician, actor. Despite his crossover appeal with white audiences, his film roles were typically that of a performer and an entertainer. Catalyst for Change Sidney Poitier, first black man to win an Academy Award for Best Leading Actor for Lilies of the Field in 1964. He used his crossover appeal to advocate for multidimensional and well-developed roles for actors of color. Did you know Oscar Michaud, born in 1884, died in 1954, directed 44 quote-unquote race films featuring African-American actors? He is considered the first prominent black director producing both silent and sound films. And there's a poster from his 1919 film, The Homesteader. Homosexuality in Hollywood. Early representations were negative, stereotypical, and often communicated through subtext. The Hayes Code, 1934 to 1967, was a strict censorship code that limited the depiction of homosexual characters by labeling them quote-unquote perverse. A quote from the celluloid closet. In a hundred years of movies, homosexuality was only rarely depicted on the screen. When it did appear, it was there as something to laugh at, or something to pity, or even something to fear. Changing ideologies? LGBTQ characters are certainly more visible in film and television and media, no longer relegated to the fringes of society. As with all non-dominant groups, characters that aren't heterosexual will continue to have to fight for representations that are realistic and multidimensional. As we end our exploration of film and media's power to inform and influence ideological beliefs, I pose the following question. Do representations in film reflect society, or do representations in society reflect film? I had a student give me a great answer to the question. She said, they reflect each other. Never underestimate the power a film has to inform hearts and minds and shape the way we see the world and each other. This week's film is American Beauty, 
directed by Sam Mendes in 1999, Kevin Spacey as Lester Burnham, and Annette Benning as Carolyn Burnham. Two response questions. What does American Beauty say about the American dream? Or are the representations in American Beauty three-dimensional or stereotypical? Films featured in this lecture. Students are encouraged to explore these films. View the PDF version of the lecture on D2L to take a closer look at these films. Until next time, have a productive week.